Hi, this is Ricky Yates, Technical Services Manager for GGS Pro and Griffin. Today's video is going to be on using insecticides to control western flower thrips on vegetable transplants. Uh, you might also want to check out videos that we produced on using biocontrols to control western flower thrips as well as how to control them on ornamental crops. Anytime that we're discussing insecticides, we like to remind growers that it's their obligation to read and follow the entire pesticide label and also to check when new containers come into your operation to uh, check and see if there's been any label changes that you need to take account for. Also, I'd like to mention the fact, although we're going to be discussing products we have a lot of confidence in, there are certainly others out there that it could be just as safe and effective as the ones that we mentioned. Here's a picture of uh, Western flower thrip damage. A lot of times we don't think about on um, being a real issue on um, vegetable transplants because we generally ship them out before they're in bloom. But you can see the significant scarring that took place on these eggplant um, from Western flower thrip feeding. In terms of um, products, we, we're really fortunate that we have as many products for vegetable transplants as we do. And I do want to point out that even though these are all labeled here as having some vegetable transplants on the label, it's still up to the grower to check and see exactly which ones those particular products are labeled for. Some of them are quite broad in nature, others not so much. Um, TriStar, if it's used at the maximum label rate, um, does a very good job. It's 25 ounces per 100 gallons. does a very good job on thrips control when it is labeled for a wide variety of vegetable transplants. Altus is labeled for suppression only for Western flower thrips, so it's not one we typically recommend. But if you're out there spraying your peppers for aphids, so let's say with Altus, you can expect to get some suppression um, for, on the Western flower thrips as well. Pylon's label allows for fruiting vegetables and there's a supplemental label for basil and chives. So it's, as you know, pylon's very effective against Western flower thrips, but uh, the, the label's relatively limited when it comes to edible crops. Uh, Contos is effective against thrips as a drench only and the label does allow for certain vegetable transplants to be drenched so you can get long lasting control from a Contos drench. Grandivo CG is a kind of unique product. It's isolated from the soil as a chromobacterium. And uh, the research that we've seen indicates that you need to use Grandivo on a regular basis. It's not a come from behind product, but making at least three sprays a week apart um, in the trials that we saw did a good job controlling thrips. Venerate CG is relatively new to us, um, but there is, it's very broad spectrum, including Western flower thrips. And um, it's really a microbial based product as well. So you might want to give that a look. And down below, I really want to emphasize this. So we feel like all of the, um, the um, myco insecticides that we have listed there are effective against Western flower thrips. And we know that by tank mixing them with an acid reactin based insect growth regulator such as Azotino, we can get really good results, not only for edible crops, but a lot of our growers like to use this on ornamentals as well. So I want to spend a little bit of time telling you about the program that uh, we recommend to growers. And you can see not only are these microbial insecticides effective against thrips, but they're also very effective against aphids and whiteflies, and some of them control additional pests beyond these. And I mentioned some of the ones we're most familiar with and we have confidence in, there may be some other good ones out there. In terms of our azadiractin-based IGRs, um, we typically recommend Azotino, but Azagard and Moltex are also good um, azadiractin-based IGRs, and there may be some other good ones out there as well. So here's the approach that we take. Um, day one, we're going to spray the microbial and the azadiract and IGR together at the same time. Um, one reason, uh, there's some synergisms there. We don't know if we understand all of what's going on, but one thing we do know is that um, the IGR slows down the molting process of the insects. And when you spray a microbial insecticide, if that insect sheds its skin and molts that night or, or shortly thereafter, there won't be time for the microbial spores to germinate and make penetration into the insect. So that's one way we know that it helps to use an IGR along with these microbials. On day four, we're going to spray the microbial by itself. We're trying to keep the number of infective spores up high long enough to get good infection. But our IGR labels really don't allow for us to spray uh, that close together. So we're going to skip uh, the IGR at that point. This should still be active from the first spray. And then day eight, we're going to make that tank mix again. 
So by doing this, um, we've helped ourselves out with the IGR activity. We have also kept a large number of infective spores out over an extended period of time to try to get the highest infection rate possible. Depending on your control, you, you may decide to keep this program going for a while, um, or you may decide to rotate off to something else. But our, our growers have found this highly effective, and especially for thrips and whiteflies, and reasonably effective against aphids as well. If you have any questions about uh, today's video, feel free to contact us with the information that you see here on this slide. Also, if you have ideas for future videos, we'd like to hear that as well. Thanks so much for listening in.